Good morning, Your Honor. Nicholas Sommer, on behalf of Mr. James Baker, who's present. Which one is helpful? Special records reflect that this morning, are you aware that there are new charges? I'm not, Your Honor. Okay. There are new criminal charges, carrying a concealed weapon, assault and resisting. This is Mr. Baker? This is Mr. Baker. The city attorney is moving to dismiss the misdemeanors that were issued in this case and a complaint warrant for various felony and misdemeanor charges were issued this morning by the Wayne County Prosecutor and myself. One of the charges is carrying a concealed weapon. One is assaulting and resisting and obstructing a police officer. One is disturbing the peace. And one is a weapons violation brandishing in public. Do you understand that? I understand that. Okay. Sir, state your name for the record, please. James Baker. Good morning, Mr. Baker. Good morning. You are charged with the following offenses. Carrying a concealed weapon, assaulting, resisting, obstructing a police officer. You are charged with carrying a concealed weapon. You are charged with disturbing the peace. And you are charged with brandishing a firearm in public. Do you understand those charges? I understand, Your Honor. Okay. The first charge alleges that on February 5th, 2017, you did carry a dangerous weapon to a handgun, whether concealed or otherwise, in a vehicle operated or occupied by said defendant to wit a 2002 Mercury contrary to MCL 750227. That is a felony with a maximum possible penalty of five years in prison and or a $2,500 fine, mandatory forfeiture of the weapon or device. Do you understand that? I understand, Your Honor. You are also charged with disturbing the peace on 2-5-2017 in the city of Dearborn, 5951 Mercury, 174767 Prospect, Dearborn, Michigan. They allege that you did make or excite a disturbance in a public building located at the Dearborn Police Department contrary to MCL 750.170. That is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum possible penalty of 90 days in jail and or a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You are also charged with weapons, firearm, brandishing in public. They allege on the same date, time, and place you did knowingly brandish a firearm in public contrary to MCL 750.234E. That is a 90-day misdemeanor and or a $100 fine, mandatory forfeiture of the weapon or device. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Upon conviction of a felony or attempted felony, the court shall order law enforcement to collect DNA identification profile samples. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Sir, you have a right to remain silent. Anything that you say orally or in writing can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You have a right to have an attorney present during any questioning that you consent to. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. If you cannot hire your own lawyer, the court would appoint one on your behalf. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. I will enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf because of the felony. And you have a right to have a probable cause conference no less than five days or more than 14 days from today's date, which is the arraignment. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And you have a right to have a preliminary examination no less than five days or more than seven days from the date of the probable cause hearing. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. The probable cause conference will be set for 3-10-17 at 9 o'clock in courtroom number one. The preliminary examination will be set for 3-10-17 at 9 o'clock. I'm sorry, 3-17-2017 at 9 o'clock in number one. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. Now we need to deal with the issue of bond. Detective here? Yes, Your Honor. Welcome to Detective City. Prosecutor, are you going to address the court? Kevin Major, on behalf of the people, Your Honor, Sergeant Carpenter will address the court with regard to bond. Thank you. Sergeant Carpenter. Your Honor, regarding bond, I'd like the court to consider the fact that the local Mr. Bergeron covered the 
those that are felony cases with enhanced sentencing, which include uh, years in prison. Um, based upon our investigation in the last several weeks, we've been analyzing um, cellular communication, um, uh, data and video from GoPro systems, SD cards, laptops. It's still ongoing, however, there are some concerns that the court needs to be aware of that have taken place in the last couple of weeks regarding bond. Uh, since, he, since Mr. Baker, Mr. Reeland posted bond, uh, I think it was on February 6th, you know, we've been monitoring Facebook activity. There's been further discussion that even though out on bond on the local misdemeanor cases, Your Honor, they have discussed uh, organizing 10 to 15 more armed individuals with AR-15s and open carrying in police departments. Obviously, that creates a concern, uh, not only for police officers, but for the public welfare. Uh, in addition, Your Honor, um, in analyzing over 7,000 text messages from Mr. Reeland's phone, with one of those texts being communicated between him and Baker, where they are planning their activities, this goes beyond um, exercising some type of uh, Second Amendment right to the behavior and activity that now is more criminal in nature. And we believe that these texts do indicate that. Um, there's discussion, and I quote, uh, in debating the police into perceived unlawful and inappropriate conduct. Um, there's discussion about having a death wish, uh, making funeral arrangements, and embracing the idea of being known as the public enemy. Uh, they appear to be in competition with other activists regarding their conduct and try to push the envelope every time to provoke the police further and further as an organized group that are, are in my opinion, professional provocateurs, um, pushing the police into almost uh, engaging in a deadly force scenario, Your Honor. Um, in addition, uh, there's been uh, text messages uh, that are more aggressive in nature discussing carrying bazookas, laws rockets, which are handheld type rockets, mortar tubes during their demonstrations and um, strapping deactivated grenades onto their bulletproof vests, uh, Your Honor. Uh, in regards to um, uh, the public welfare, um, that, that, that's a concern of ours, of course, but they also are making apparent attempts in their planning to conceal their identity during uh, criminal behavior, which discusses wearing masks, obviously, with the nature of this case, but also changing from bright colored uh, clothing into dark colored clothing. Um, after the demonstrations to avoid apprehension or identification by officers on surveillance. They've also discussed um, taking advantage of Trumpophobia and wearing uh, full Muslim uh, robes or headgear or, in their words, turbans um, and carrying AK-47s during their demonstrations. There's been discussion of, of uh, carrying openly while black and painting their faces black to conceal their identity and walking around residential neighborhoods with hoods pulled up um, to incite fear in the public and provoke the police. Uh, there are also discussion which places law enforcement officers in jeopardy by uh, videotaping undercover operatives leaving Oakland County net and uh, the DEA buildings, which would obviously place uh, them in jeopardy if other uh, individuals involved in criminal activity were able to identify these uh, officers that were in undercover capacity. There's been discussion of causing shit storms, and if I may, I won't swear, but F, F S up, uh, making vulnerable meek approaches only to hulk up, quote unquote, to test law enforcement. And finally, they've identified even more locations for their demonstrations and activities, which include, but are not limited to, uh, an MSP post in Taylor, the FBI building in Detroit, Lapeer Prison, the DA building in Detroit, Calhoun County Jail, Kalamazoo County Jail, Van Buren County Jail, Allegan County Jail, Ottawa County Jail, Muskegon County, Oakland County Narcotics Enforcement Team, power plants, Post, office, post offices, substations, oil refineries, and, of course, the city of Dearborn. And I would ask that, based upon this information, that the court issues a substantial bond, which would, to include turning over any and all firearms um, contained within the residences. We are aware that Mr. Baker has at least nine uh, handguns registered in his name. And also, based upon these activities and their uh, attempts to conceal their identities during demonstrations, we ask that they are both <coughs> fixed with a GPS tether uh, in the event that they do engage in further activity, that we go to monitor their whereabouts and identify them, and it turns criminal, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Sinead, anything further to add? Well, based on all that's been said by Sergeant Carpenter, Your Honor, we are asking for a significant high cash bond, Your Honor. Uh, Sergeant Carpenter has a specific recommendation with regard to bond. Under, I believe, a $30,000 cash bond, sure, he's prudent in this matter. Mr. Dugas, do you have anything to say? Uh, Your Honor, just a matter of housekeeping uh, for uh, the people of the city of Dearborn, as the court has indicated, uh, the people will move uh, to dismiss the, the local charges, I believe it was for refused booking and breach of peace, consistent with Mr. Baker's arraignment uh, just now on, uh, on the felony charges, or the state charges. Pursuant to uh, the prosecutor's motion, um, case number 
107C22345 OM uh, will be dismissed. Further, case number 107C22344 OM um, will be dismissed. And that last file, Judge, was the state file that you referred to? There's a state misdemeanor charge? Yes. The state misdemeanor charge that the people would also move to dismiss without prejudice based on the new felony charges. Okay. Uh, case number 17S3532, um, pursuant to the prosecutor's motion, will be dismissed without prejudice. Okay, so that takes care of that. Counsel, uh, would you like to address the issue of bond? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. As you know, the two prongs of, of bond are, are they a flight risk? They have hired counsel. They are well-known political activists on the Internet. They have hundreds of videos, 4 million views, thousands of subscribers. Um, they plan on fighting this case all the way through. As far as danger to the community, they are not. They are well-known activists. Everything that has been described has been legal, completely legal. They are allowed to open carry in Michigan. I know maybe people might have problems with that, but it doesn't matter. They have no violent history whatsoever. Um, out of all the um, demonstrations they've done, there's not been any sort of person hurt or any sort of confrontation until this Dearborn uh, incident that happened. Uh, there's no reason to hold them uh, at a 30000 cash bond. This is a political witch hunt, it seems like. You see the, uh, the force brought here against my clients. We're going to ask for personal bond. They're not a danger at all. There's, no, there's not one single fact to say that they're a danger. Counsel, do you agree with me that the um, Second Amendment is not an absolute guarantee for, for open carry and that the open carry law is in uh, a state of flux right now? Uh, based on the case of um, Heller versus the District of Columbia? Um, respectfully, Your Honor, there is no open carry law. There's no open carry law in the state of Michigan, so what you're relying on is the Second Amendment for the open carry, is that correct? There's no law prohibiting it, so you're allowed to do it. Under the Second Amendment? The Second Amendment says the government can't write laws prohibiting the Second Amendment. There is no law prohibiting open carry, is what I'm saying, Your Honor. But, but you'll agree with me that that's not absolute. I agree that that's what the court is deciding. Okay. Uh, there are a number of things that I need to consider when I am considering bond. Um, one of the things is a, the, the prior record. I've heard nothing about that. Uh, one of the things is whether or not um, Mr. Baker will appear. I've heard nothing about that. Substance abuse history, heard nothing about that. One of the things uh, that is uh, a factor that needs to be decided in considering bond is the risk or danger to the public. Uh, under the circumstances, with the information that has been given to me by the detective, uh, with the fact that uh, your client, Mr. Baker, walked into the police station with body gear, with a ski mask on and with what appeared to be uh, an assault rifle slung over his chest. I believe that he caused, um, those are the allegations and, and there is YouTube video of it, uh, that he caused serious uh, danger to both the police department, the community, and the civilian who, civilians who work in that court in that police station. Um, I find that, uh, you know, this is a very serious situation. I find that um, based on that and based on the uh, risk to the public uh, that I am going to order a $50,000 cash or surety bond. I'm going to order that he turn over all his weapons to the Dearborn Police Department.
Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Nicholas Sonnery on behalf of Mr. Brandon Vreeland, who's present. Counsel, have you had discussions with your clients regarding possible conflict of interest in this matter? I have, Your Honor. Okay. And sir, has he had that conversation with you? Yes. And do you believe that there may be a conflict of interest with counsel representing both you and Mr. Baker? Not at this moment. Okay. Should you decide at some point in time that there may be a conflict of interest in that representation, please bring that to the court's attention and we'll deal with that matter. Okay. Okay. Sir, your name is Brandon Vreeland, is that correct? Yes. And you are charged with the following felony offenses. One is carrying a concealed weapon. One is assaulting, resisting, or obstructing a police officer. One is disturbing the peace. Do you understand that? Yes. It's alleged that on February 5th, 2017, you did carry a dangerous weapon to a handgun, whether concealed or otherwise, in a vehicle operated or occupied by said defendant to wit a 2002 Mercury contrary to MCL 750.227. That is a felony with a maximum possible penalty of five years in prison or a $2,500 fine, mandatory forfeiture of the weapon or device. Do you understand that? Yes. So it's also alleged that you did assault, batter, wound, resist, or obstruct, or oppose, or endanger Corporal Clive, a police officer of Dearborn, that the defendant knew or had reason to know was performing his or her duties contrary to MCL 750.81B1. That too happened on June 5th, 17th, in the city of Dearborn at the police department. Do you understand that? Yes. That is a felony carrying a maximum possible penalty of two years in prison and or a $2,000 fine. The second sentence may be imposed under MCL 750.506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement or under MCL 750.81B6 for another violation arising out of the same transaction. Do you understand that? Yes. It's also alleged, sir, that you did disturb the peace, you did make or excite a disturbance in a public building located at Dearborn Police Department contrary to MCL 750.170. That is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum possible penalty of 90 days in jail and or a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Yes. Sir, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Yes. You have a right to have a lawyer represent you during any questioning consented to. Do you understand that? Yes. You have an attorney now, but if you didn't have the money to hire an attorney, the court would appoint an attorney for you. Do you understand that? Yes. I would enter a knock and examine your behalf as one of these charges. Two of these charges are felonies. You have the right to have a probable cause conference no less than five days or more than 14 days from the date of the arraignment, which is today. You have the right to have a preliminary examination no less than five days or more than seven days after the probable cause conference. I will schedule a probable cause conference for March 10th, 2017 at 9 o'clock, courtroom number one. I will schedule a preliminary examination for March 17th, 2017 at 9 o'clock a.m. in courtroom number one. The attorney will have to address bond in this matter as well. I just want to avoid redundancy. I'd like to express the department's desire to reaffirm the same information provided from Mr. Baker and relay that to Mr. Freeland regarding the bond. I'll have the same amount and the same conditions. Okay, thank you. I agree with Sergeant Carpenter, Your Honor. We asked for a similar bond as to the last case. Okay. And Mr. DiBiase, you're here to move to dismiss the misdemeanor cases? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, based on the city attorney's motion to dismiss case number 17C22339, that case will be dismissed. Case number 17C22340, that case will be dismissed. Case number 17C22341, that case will be dismissed as well. Bonds will be returned on those cases.
Your Honor. Mr. Reeling will be coming back to court to face these charges. There's no substance abuse history, no violent history of violence. In this matter, he was carrying a camera in the police station. Um, you said your reasons for the high bond last time was because of entering with a firearm. Um, he only had a camera. And again, he's a, politi a political activist, and this is what these guys do, so what these guys believe in. Nothing they, nothing they have done in the past, out of dozens and dozens, probably approaching 100 times, has been illegal. Um, they've never been arrested in regards to political activism. And we are going to ask for personal bond. They're not a danger to the community. Mr. Greenland is not a danger at all. Um, a situation in my mind where Mr. Greenland most certainly is uh, innocent of being guilty in a court of law. Uh, the um, conduct of Mr. Greenland uh, that's been alleged uh, is uh, lesser uh, than Mr. Baker. Mr. Greenland uh, did not have a um, weapon when he walked into the police department. Uh, however, I do um, think that the matter is a very serious matter and um, that uh, he was involved in it uh, to, to, uh, to a great extent, although he did not have a weapon at the police department. Uh, I still believe that um, uh, this kind of conduct is a danger to both the police department, the public, and the um, civilian workers uh, that uh, are in the police department. Uh, Mr. Breland's bond will be 20000 cash or surety. He's to turn in all his weapons. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you.